Hey everybody, Ben for the Bono Podcast, and we've got a very cool unbox and review for you today. We have picked up the two Goblin Star Players from Forge World. Now, they weren't something I was eagerly awaiting when they were released, but having planned out our next Bonehead Championship, we are going to need these Star Players, so it made sense to pick them up, and any time we buy something from Forge World, I find it's always useful to actually unbox it, have a look and see how big it is, how clean it is, how much work it takes to build. So, let's have a look at Fungus the Loon and Bomber Dribble Snot. Okay, so it comes in a plastic clamshell box as ever with Forge World. Um, and it's both star players in one. So this is Forge World. This is about £21, I think. With postage, you're looking at 25 quid. 25 quid for two star players is a little bit more reasonable. That's something I'm, I'm ever so slightly happier to pay than kind of £21 per star player. So in the box, you will get the instructions and you will get the rules for both of these in this uh, on this bit of cardboard. On this, It's not even cardboard, it's just paper. You have to cut the clamshell open to get it, but what we can see here are the build instructions for both the star players. So uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six pieces for Fungus and one, two, three, four, five pieces for Bomber Dribble Snot. Given that some of the other models have been up to 11 pieces, even when they're small, like Scroll, this is pretty decent. And it doesn't look like their faces are in multiple pieces. So I'm a really big fan of that. So these are resin models. And uh, before filming this, I've taken them out. I've soaked them in lukewarm water. Okay, we're not talking boiling water because it will melt the resin. But a dash of fairy washing up liquid. Other washing up liquids are available. And... Um, you know, left it for half an hour, then got big dry brush and just kind of gave them a bit of a clean up and rinsed them off a bit and left them to air dry. And and you want to do that with resin because you get the resin release agents from the mold, um, which can make them slippy. You can actually feel it when you open them up. They feel a little bit oily. And uh, you want to be able to prime these. You want to be able to glue them at least, even if you're like me, you tend to just <laughs> build a model, prime it, and then move on with your life. Gluing and, build, gluing and priming won't work if you don't clean them up, so you're going to want to do that here. So uh, let's have a look. We get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine chunks of player. So we are going to kind of sort them into uh, various piles of players because I don't know if that looks like a bomb, so that's bomber. That's old bomber's face, and that looks like fungus pieces, and that also looks like fungus pieces. So it looks like they've actually built the models uh, separately, which is good. So you've got all the pieces for one or another here, which is remarkably useful. With a split pack like this, I was kind of expecting the sprues, as it were, to kind of be mixed in, but it isn't. Right, okay, let's have a look and see if we can get the detail on these resin models here. Can I get any closer? Can we do it, camera? Can we do it? Yes, we can. Ya ish can. Right, here we go. So it's a classic Games Workshop resin model. There are two things you can be sure about when it comes to a Games Workshop resin model. One is the jersey barrier on the bottom. It's going to come with a chunk. Now, I have seen this online a lot where people will prime them on the plot and just paint them in kind of sub-assemblies. That's actually really useful. I'm not going to bother with these models, but with a, a bigger kit or a more interesting kit, perhaps, definitely something to worth doing. In the meantime, I'm just going to chuck this off and... Um, Throw it in the trash essentially but you can see i am going to get this zoomed in come on come on we can do this you can see that actually the casting quality is excellent the it's crisp i'm really happy with the quality there's a little bit of flash and as we look through some of the other pieces you can see uh there's uh, it's, it's more of a, a film where between the mold pieces there's like a, a little bit of a gap so it kind of spreads out and you get this um you get this like little, these little flat areas that form, and I think this is probably the best example of this. And you've got a couple of air channels here that create these uh, points of flash, and you get this film in between it. So it's going to take a little bit of cleanup with these pieces, but the good thing is it's resin, so it's not too bad. And you've got to watch out for the little fingertips here, is what I call them, where they're essentially air channels, I think. So what they'll do is they'll have the mold in. This is where the resin will go down and it will chain through. And as part of the casting priest, they'll have to have like exit air molds, exit pieces here to make sure you keep the detail. Again, gonna take a little bit of cleanup, um, but historically, not something we do too well on the channel. That's not fair, just me. 
blood type Ben does a proper job. And you can see detail on the face is really, really good. Okay, so we've seen the molds, we've seen the pieces, not too many pieces. Let's see how badly I can build them. built built both of them we'll start with bomber dribble snot so you can see there's a gap on the arm and i think that might be where i placed the head and the body maybe not quite where it needs to go i'm not entirely sure what i got wrong there that's on me though potentially but definitely one to be very very wary of it might pay to glue this arm onto the head bit before you glue him on now because it's got like a little armband strap there, I'm just going to chuck a little bit of green stuff in the gap. And it's just going to look like it, the flag bits like drop down on his arm. I'm not too worried about it. It's fine. But the actual model comes together really nicely. The pieces with the exception of the arm bit aren't too difficult to fit in. And anything that you do get a bit of a, a gap in is going to be covered up by your, your, your priming process. So awesome stuff. Really happy with the model. Let's have a look at fungus. But... Okay, Fungus has come off his base, that's on me. I'm only de uh, kind of just about gluing these guys onto bases because I want to... They're going to have different bases to match the team that they are going to be playing in in the Bonehead Championship. All right, well, we'll, we'll come back to we'll come back to that, that piece there. Uh, glue their thumb there. Right, this model though, no problems at all, I think. The head, just trying to make sure you've got him the, the, the right way up is fine. Um, do the arms first. Do the arms first. The head doesn't need to go on. So you can do the head afterwards uh, and it will just not fit in nicely with the model. But yeah, do the arms and everything else first. I wasn't, I was impressed with how the leg went on. It fit in correctly. The arms are actually really well aligned. So the right arm has got like a, a cutaway and the, it slots in really nicely, which is awesome. And the finished model is, is very goodness sake come on loctite super glue you're supposed to be the best of us um yeah it's a very 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 cool model right i'm going to glue this to the base and then we'll have a look at size comparisons so as the glue dries on fungus the loon let's have a look at bomber dribble snot so bomber dribble snot is a star player at strength two so we've got uh fitz magic from the marienberg minotaurs here Lining him up size wise, yeah, he looks pretty stunty. But when it comes to Games Workshop Forge World models, the scale is a little bit variable. Scroll was a tiny little dwarf, actually smaller than a halfling. So let's do the ultimate goblin test. We have got Grot Brady from the Black Mountain Buccaneers. And Bomber Dribble Snot seems to line up pretty well. Bomber is a little bit bigger, but not so noticeably that he becomes human sized. This is a star player. If anything, you want your star players to be a little bit larger than life. Uh, very much like Grot Brady's namesake. I hope this guy actually retires after 200 years in the uh, in the NAF. Right, so model-wise, the size is, is perfect. Yeah, we've got a really decently sized goblin here, which is exactly what we're wanting. This guy's supposed to be strength two. He's going to fit nicely into a goblin team. But the cool thing is, where his armor is just bits of plate metal. It fits in both with the Goblin Goblins and with the Black Orc Goblins. And he's got his little goggles on there. So yeah, size comparison wise, perfect. Okay, and Fungus the Loon, who is a Strength 7 Ball and Chain, needs to be Goblin sized as well. So let's bring Grot Brady back. And actually, yeah, size wise looks really good. A little bit slighter, but actually that's not an issue. And he's a little bit taller. So one thing I am super excited about is the fact that he's not the same kind of goblin as the black orc goblins or as uh, as bomber right bomber has got the goblin team aesthetic fungus the loon has the night goblin team aesthetic so come on night goblin team from games workshop night goblins are just way more fun but size wise he's perfect for strength two if we pop him next to a strength three guy yeah fine and the cylinder test where you kind of drop him down and how much space is he going to take up on the pitch it's fine it works really well. There's going to be a couple of issues maybe with some of the bigger models, but hey, you're a strength seven ball and chain. You're going to power them down soon enough. So again, both of these models, pretty easy to build. Size wise is perfect. And there you have it. Fungus the Loon and Bomber Dribble Snot from Forge World. 
I really like these. They are much better than I was expecting. Um, they fit together really nicely. They're resin, so there's a little bit of like uh, flash and casting, and the ball and chain on Fungus was a little bit chunked up. But it's a big block of metal, so actually when it comes to painting it, not going to be a problem at all. The size is perfect. The value, all right, it's still £25 for two-star players, but they are pretty cool models. And actually, I'm a big fan. I was looking for them for our one of our teams in the Bono Championship in the next series. I needed them. And I thought, you know what, let's pick up the Forge Odd ones. It's a bit of a treat. They're going to be really fun to paint up. So actually, two thumbs up for Bomber Drivel Snot and Fungus the Loon. And let's not shy away from the fact that they are potentially two of the best star players out there at the moment. So awesomeness all around. Anyway, I'm going to wrap up. Thank you very much for watching. We'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Happy blocking. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to help support the channel even further, please like and subscribe or come join us on our Patreon. We have early access to content. We get loads of feedback from you guys and we try and do competitions as much as we can. Or you can get yourself some Bonehead Podcast merch on our Spreadshirt site. So if you want to support a team, especially for the Bonehead Championship, you can pick up a shirt, a mug, things like that. It all helps support the channel and we really appreciate it. Anyway, links below. Thank you very much. Happy blocking.